Hi, I'm Gail Trotter, host of The Gail Trotter Show. I'm a liberty-loving, tyranny-hating lawyer based in your nation's capital. My goal is to keep you informed and to be your advocate in Washington, D.C. I do believe these challenging times that we are all experiencing together have made it even more important that we have advocates for liberty and freedom, particularly in Washington, D.C., where many of these one-size-fits-all mandates are made and then blast it out to the rest of the country. Obviously, we're seeing huge infringements on liberty and freedom in states like California, which is not un unusual for California, but certainly they're taking it to an extreme due to the coronavirus pandemic. And I have some interesting stories to report to you. You may have heard these stories already, but if not, they're really important and I think you need to pay attention to them, get informed on them, and be able to talk to your friends and family members about this too if it comes up. So the first story that I wanna cover today is from an Axios report, which I will link down below so you can read the whole report if you want to. It is an investment investigative story that they spent more than a year developing. It's based on the testimony of four former and current federal intelligence community members, and it all revolves around the influence and spying operation that the Communist Party of China was trying to run on United States Democrat politicians even beginning so early as the mayoral level. Uh, the report details that this one woman from China was sent here and got involved in politics in the Democrat Party at a very local level. And it was in the Midwest, it was with low-level politicians, people that they thought might have a chance to become national politicians. And so you think about the time and energy that would go into trying to cultivate people at such a low level with the hopes that they would continue to rise rapidly in American politics, it is really astounding and breathtaking. So this report specifically detailed how Eric Swalwell, who is a Democrat congressman who also serves on the House Intelligence Committee, was cultivated by the Chinese woman that they report on in this Axios article that I'm gonna to link to down below. And it talks about how in 2015, federal investigators were so alarmed that a foreign government was targeting Swalwell that they gave him a defensive briefing, meaning they told him what was going on in their investigation to try and warn him so that he would not continue to have interactions with this Chinese woman who they believed was targeting him for spying to give intelligence back to her masters in China, who were part of the Communist Party, which oppresses its own religious people, it oppresses its own people who are trying to live free and have their families and their businesses, it rep represses ethnic minorities, and it causes a lot of grief in the larger uh, Pacific region, trying to influence a lot of the other countries around them, like the Philippines, uh, interactions with Taiwan, obviously, interactions with Japan, and many of the smaller country, the smaller Asian countries as well. The Chinese party is a force, the Chinese Communist Party is a force to be reckoned with. And it is something that President Trump and his administration has been warning Americans about. President Trump was trying to change, reset the relationship with China so that it no longer disadvantaged the American economy, but also understanding that China is a big power and we need to have diplomatic relations with a country like China. But but certainly, we don't want to be pushed around. We want to put America first, and we want to make sure that American foreign policy favors Americans and make sure that it advances the national interests. So why this story is so interesting and so important and so appalling 
is that you might remember Eric Swalwell was one of the most outspoken public officials about the Russian collusion narrative that was pushed by the mainstream media and the Democrat Party and the Democrat leadership since President Trump took office in 2017. And it was part of the overall effort to invalidate the 2016 presidential election that President Donald J. Trump won and the effort to uh, essentially remove President Trump from office when they were unable to invalidate the election. This is something that the Democrats never gave up and their allies in the mainstream media gave them plenty of assists trying to tr track this down and make sure that every American knew about the allegations and following every little bitty lead and taking everything and making into, you know, 24 seven cable news coverage. And yet in this situation where Axios is reporting that Eric Swalwell, who is a congressman sitting on the House Intelligence Committee, meaning he has access to highly classified information that is about how we're trying to defend our country, the diplomatic policies of our country, and threats and uh, retaliations that we might be undergoing as uh, the country. He was the target of this foreign interference by the Communist Party of China. And so it's really important to think about that when they're questioning Eric Swalwell, he was one of the biggest ones to try and attack President Trump with allegations of foreign interference and calling President Trump an agent of Russia. And Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany made an excellent point today. I'll try to link to her tweet down below as well, where she said the whole story was about President Trump, foreign interference, by Russia. Well, it turns out that the true story is foreign interference by China with members of the Democrat Party. Talk about projection. We have discussed this over and over again on this show about all these situations where the Democrats allege that the Republicans are doing something or the Democrats fault the Republicans for doing something. And it turns out that the Democrats are merely projecting their faults, their problems, their uh, illegal behavior onto the Republicans. And this seems, based on these allegations in the Axios report, that this is exactly more evidence of democratic projection, deflection, and blame shifting. And when we think about that in relation to this particular situation, we have to ask, where is the mainstream media reporting on this? Is it 24 seven? Who's going and talking to Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and asking her why Eric Swalwell was put on the House Intelligence Committee? And you might remember uh, another one of the Democrat senators uh, from California was wrapped up in an issue about having uh, someone who was involved in spying on her staff. And there are similar allegations related to Eric Swalwell that this Chinese woman who was a spy was uh, successful at placing an intern in Eric Swalwell's congressional office. So this is one of the allegations of this story as of yet unverified, but certainly something that you think would cause the mainstream media's hair to be on fire. Oh, but no, it's a Democrat. So the mainstream media is gonna try whatever they can to do to stifle this story, to smother it with a pillow, to make sure that it is not part of the 24 seven media conversation. And certainly the Democrats are gonna do whatever they can to what do they always do when they're charged with something? They blame Trump. It's kind of like what Ambassador Jean Kirkpatrick said in the 1984 Republican convention about the Democrats, how they blame America first. Well, now this has evolved in 2020 to blame Trump first. So I want to see if you have any other examples of that. Please put it in the comments down below of where you've seen 
Democrat misbehavior and they turn that around and project it onto President Trump and they blame Trump first. So if you have any other examples of this, please put them down in the comments so that everybody can read them and see if they agree with you or not and have a handy list of where this happens. So then the other story that I want to share with you today is that part of the whispering class of Washington, D.C. is very excited about all the great patronages that will be handed out over the next a uh, few months if Biden is able to win in the Electoral College and he's able, able to overcome all of the lawsuits. We just saw a new lawsuit by the state of Texas suing because their voters are not represented in their votes if city if states like Pennsylvania and Michigan are not and Georgia are not abiding by basic election ballot security. So we're gonna keep keep an eye on that Texas case. Unfortunately, there was a bad result at the Supreme Court yesterday in the one of the Pennsylvania cases. They declined to take it up, and that was an avenue that a lot of supporters of President Trump and supporters of ballot integrity, voter ID integrity, wanted to see the Supreme Court take up. But that is what's going on in the legal world. And then obviously with the Electoral College, that's coming up next week, the vote, the certification for that and the vote for that. And obviously the Republicans do not have control of the House right now. So you're not gonna see anything at the federal level in the House of Representatives. But what I was talking about is how so many people are looking forward to having new patronages in the Biden administration. And one of the most interesting ones to emerge today was that Joe Biden is considering nominating Mayor Pete Buttigieg to be ambassador to China, which obviously has a lot of relevance to the story of Chinese spying with Eric Swalwell and Democratic, uh, lower level Democratic uh, politicians. So when you think about the possibility of Mayor Pete being an ambassador to China, it is really eye opening. Because as you know, Mayor Pete mounted his campaign for president solely on the experience of being mayor of South Bend, Indiana. His foreign experience is zero. And it would certainly help him politically to be appointed ambassador to China so that if he obviously has future political ambitions, he could use that as his basis for saying that he had foreign policy experience to say, oh, I've been ambassador to China. I have foreign policy experience with one of the biggest global powers. And you know, he can hone his credentials through that type of an appointment. Now, Joe Biden compared Mayor Pete to his deceased son, Bo. And some people are taking that as a sign that Joe Biden really likes Mayor Pete and appreciated that Mayor Pete pulled out of the presidential primary season so that Joe Biden could consolidate the support of more moderate Democrats in order to beat Bernie Sander for the Democrat nomination. However, I believe that Joe Biden comparing Mayor Pete to his son is an indication that he believes Mayor Pete has a lack of experience, that he is young and that he has a lack of experience. And that is why Joe Biden is comparing Mayor Pete to his son. It would be a huge, huge mistake to make Mayor Pete ambassador to China. And one can hope that either the courts or the state legislatures will make sure that Joe Biden is never president in as a result of the 2020 presidential election. But if that is not the case, then Mayor Pete would show if he were nominated to be ambassador to China, which I don't think Joe Biden will do because that is such a plum, plum patronage sport 
spot for supporters of any president or uh, particularly of Joe Biden. And given the reporting that Tucker Carlson and the New York Post did on Joe Biden's family's ties to China, you would think that Joe Biden would want to keep that relationship much closer than the relationship that he has with Mayor Pete. But stay tuned because we're going to keep following these two stories about Eric Swalwell, about the uh infiltration of Chinese spies covered by Axios, these allegations. We're going to see what develops on that story. We're also going to see what develops with the Electoral College next week and with all of these lawsuits on the election. And I thank you so much for joining me today. Please subscribe to this show. Hit the bell so you don't miss a single episode. And let me know what is the story that you are following today and what would you like me to report back to you in the upcoming days. Thank you so much for joining me.